more and more people are becoming lactose intolerant. And for that reason, many of these people are cutting dairy out of their diets. And rightly so, in at least some cases, because I know of anecdotal accounts where people have bad reactions to dairy, and upon eliminating it, they don't have these reactions anymore. So is it necessarily fair to say that dairy is the culprit? And I say no for a couple of reasons. First is that the way in which we react to certain foods has a lot to do with the state of our immune system. Many of us have immune systems that are not optimal because of poor lifestyles, such as not getting sufficient amount and quality of sleep, not getting sufficient sunlight and not getting sunlight at the right times, not breathing properly, namely breathing through your nose instead of your mouth, where I'll do a separate video on that, not exercising sufficiently and properly, and of course, not eating a nutrient-dense diet. There are some people who take care of themselves better than others, and they may not have the same reactions to certain foods as others do who are not as healthy. But also, the other reason it's not fair to say that dairy is the culprit is because not all dairy is the same. Until about 10 years ago, I had never even heard of non-pasteurized or otherwise known as raw dairy. I just assume you get dairy at the grocery store, dairy is dairy, and that's all there is to it. But upon looking into the differences further, I realized there are vast differences between pasteurized and non-pasteurized dairy. Now, the point of pasteurization, and there is a benefit, is that it is heated up to, it means to be heated up to 150 or 162 degrees, depending on the duration, which kills pathogens. And pathogens result because these cows that are pasteurized are sick due to horrific conditions they're in, not getting any sunlight, not getting any exercise. And I can't even imagine the foods they eat, but they're definitely not eating a diet that nature intended. So we cannot be consuming milk that has all these pathogens in it due to all these dangerous conditions because then that will cause big problems for us. But is raw milk dangerous? And the answer is yes, it can be. And I will admit that these large medical associations that have said so and organizations like the CDC, who I know have expressed concerns over raw milk consumptions are right to an extent. But we have to understand that there is a difference between non-pasteurized milk that's intended for pasteurization and non-pasteurized milk that's intended for human consumption. People get all worried when they see these warnings about the dangers of raw milk, or they might if they actually saw them, if they never even heard of raw milk. It just sounds like something that's really out there. And when these large associations are saying how dangerous it is, it can be very easy to continue to drink the pasteurized milk. But the milk that's non-pasteurized, that's intended for human consumption, is not only not dangerous, but it's actually extremely beneficial. I will, I will expand on this and actually give you studies that show this. A lot of the information I'm getting is from realmilk.com, which is a project of the Weston A. Price Foundation that I've mentioned in a previous video and will continue to mention, as well as the Raw Milk Institute. Now, the Raw Milk Institute has set standards for raw milk producers. I believe it was started in 2011. It wasn't even dangerous before 2011, and I'll explain that too. But due to these more rigorous standards that are being set, not government standards, because we don't necessarily need government to keep everything safe. There can be private organizations like the Raw Milk Institute that can promulgate standards that people will actually follow that will enhance the safety of various products. Uh, in this case, I'm speaking of raw milk. So, in addition, though, back to what raw milk was like before, there was an independent assessment, and I believe this came from either realmilk.com or the Raw Milk Institute, and I'll have this all in the description, assessing the dangers of raw milk in terms of how many people actually get hospitalized or your odds of getting hospitalized. So what they found from 2000 to 2007 was that there was a 1 in 94,000 chance of getting sick from raw milk. And a one in six million chance of getting seriously ill because they made a distinction between sick and really sick to the point where you would get hospitalized. To my knowledge, nobody has ever died as a result of the consumption of raw milk. Now, there are some people you might say that 
died from raw dairy, but that there's something called, I believe it's called bathtub cheese. It's not made in the way that the Raw Milk Institute would ever suggest or any of these farmers I get my raw dairy from would ever make it. And sometimes these studies or these statistics might be talking about raw milk that's commingled with multiple different dairies. So you always have to look beneath the surface in order to assess the true dangers of something that the CDC might warn you about. You have to understand that what they're talking about is raw milk intended for pasteurization. But let's go into more data because I am a little bit skeptical and when somebody makes claims, I always like for there to be raw, hard data that I can follow and data that actually makes sense, that's not manipulated. So there was a study of 983 European infants ranging from 8 to 53 weeks. This study was published in January 2015 in the Journal of Allergy and Clinical Immunology. And it tracked all of these infants' consumption of raw, pasteurized, and ultra-pasteurized milk alongside occurrences of respiratory tract and ear infections, as well as fever and rhinitis. And what it found was really interesting and not surprising based on what I've just described, that there was actually an inverse relationship between the consumption of raw milk and all of these illnesses. And that pasteurized milk in other studies is shown to cause the very illnesses that raw milk actually cures us of. But it's not just minor illnesses that raw milk can actually help us with. It's major illnesses and doctors back in the early 20th century and late 19th century actually endorsed treating these disorders and illnesses like brain disorders, like gastrointestinal problems, like renal and liver failure, like heart problems and diabetes. I mean, serious stuff where raw milk was used to treat it. Now, that's not to say that if you have any of these problems, just drink raw milk and you'll be fine. Our immune systems and our food system and a lot of things were different back then. It's just to say that raw milk isn't necessarily as dangerous as people make it out to be because I think they're distorting the truth. And there's also a lot of commercial interest, large dairy producers that have financial incentives to tell you that raw milk is dangerous because ultimately it will affect their profits. And their profits are going down. The demand for pasteurized milk has been decreasing over the years. And the demand for raw milk, despite all the regulations that makes it extremely difficult to become a raw milk farmer, has been increasing. And speaking of farmers, the number of farmers has decreased drastically. I think there were over 1 million dairy farmers at some point. I think it's down to 35,000. And these regulations are extremely prejudicial towards the very large producers, making it very difficult for the smaller producers to survive. I am not against efficiency or free trade or getting things bigger, better, faster, and cheaper in some cases, but that's not necessarily a good idea with our food. Pasteurized dairy is cheaper, but I also want to point out that it destroys a lot of the nutrients like vitamins A through E, like the probiotics, like reducing bioavailable iron, phosphorus, and calcium. So it makes sense that people who consume pasteurized milk have all these illnesses and ear infections as well. I had that as a kid and I consumed pasteurized milk. And it makes sense that the raw milk that's far more nutrient dense and safer reduces these problems. It is amazing how far we've come from a lot of this ancient wisdom that we could simply pick up by reading books that were written by doctors a hundred years ago or so. And no, it doesn't mean that just because we've advanced as a society over the past hundred years doesn't mean we shouldn't listen to some of these doctors. Uh, and a professor like James Tyson, who uh, I believe it was 1884 that he published uh, information in uh, the Journal of the American Medical Association, also talking about all of the illnesses and major ailments that raw milk can actually help you with. Now, there can be some problems I want to point out with consuming a certain type of raw milk for some people. And it might be, again, people with compromised or non-optimal immune systems. There's two different types of cows known as A1 or A2 cows. 
the A1 cows have what some might describe as a potentially toxic opiate called BCM7 that some people have trouble tolerating. The A2 cows don't have that. And neither does dairy coming from other animals like goats, camels, sheep, and donkeys. So if you're going to consume raw milk, it doesn't mean you should stay away from A1 milk, but find out if the cow is an A1 or A2 cow or consider consuming raw milk or raw dairy from another animal. I really love farmmatch.com. Realmilk.com is great to find where you can get milk from, but I just love farmmatch.com. It puts you in touch with all these different farmers wherever you are in the country. I use one particular local farm and one called Miller's Organic Farm. I also love that because that has an incredibly wide variety of products and they deliver from you to your, to your door. Now there is a shipping charge that they have, whereas others give you free shipping. Um, but it's really fantastic in terms of their variety and their prices are really good. So even with the shipping charge, which is I believe a minimum of $30 there in Pennsylvania, and they want it, it has to be a little bit high because they don't want the shipping to take too long just to make sure that everything doesn't spoil, but the prices are so low that it's often, depending on what you get, still worth it. I also want to add um, about the French paradox. Now, I think, I don't know exactly what the French eat, but they don't eat foods that we would consider healthy, yet they don't have a lot of health problems. I mean, they're generally considered a very healthy prop population, and they are considered snobs about cheese. They will actually not accept cheese from A1 cows. Like, they can tell the difference. I think a lot of our taste, taste buds have been numb, so a lot of us not ever having experienced this wide variety of foods or cheeses, we don't necessarily notice. But once you start, as Joel Salatin says, to engage in the means by which you fuel yourself, then you'll really start to think a lot more about your health and you won't necessarily blindly listen to medical associations that might have conflicts of interest and might not be giving you the whole story.